In this example, we'll be calculating an empirical formula based on percentages of each atom within the compound. And we can do this because empirical formulas relate relative numbers of each atom within a compound. We don't typically work in numbers of atoms, we typically work in moles, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to convert those percentages into moles somehow. We've never taught you how to do that, but we have taught you how to convert masses into moles. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to, conv to convert those percentages into grams. So what we can do is we can say, in any size sample of this compound, those percentages are going to be true. If you have 10 grams, or 100 grams, or 6,000 grams, the percentages of carbon will always be 32%, the percentage of hydrogen will always be 6%, and so on. So what we do is we assume 100 grams. That's the easiest option. If we assume 100 grams, then those percentages are directly mapped onto the masses. So 32% carbon means 32 grams of carbon. So what we can do is we can just write that down. 32.00 grams of carbon and 6.73 grams of hydrogen and 18.66 grams of nitrogen and 42.63 grams of oxygen. Once we have masses, converting them to moles is very easy. We've done this before. So what we do is we use the molecular weights. You look at the periodic table and you can say one mole of carbon atoms weighs 12.01 grams, which means you have 2.664 moles of carbon atoms. And you do a similar thing for hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. And you end up with moles of each of those options as well. So you end up with 6.66 moles of hydrogen. You end up with 1.332 moles of nitrogen. And you end up with 2.664 moles of oxygen. Once you know the moles of each of these atoms, what you can do is you can compare them to one another. And you do that by comparing everything to the smallest number of moles. So in this case, the smallest number of moles is nitrogen. So you're going to compare the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to the number of moles of nitrogen. And you're going to do that in terms of ratios. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a calculation for each atom. We have 2.664 moles of carbon. We're going to divide that by 1.332 moles of nitrogen. So we're going to find the ratio of carbon to nitrogen atoms. And that number happens to be 2.000. We're going to do a similar calculation for hydrogen, 6.66 moles, divided by 1.332. And you end up with 5.00. Nitrogen, 1.332 divided by 1.332, you end up with 1.000. In oxygen, you have 2.664 divided by 1.332, and again, you end up with 2.000. These represent the numbers of each atom relative to the number of nitrogen atoms. So for every two carbons, you have one nitrogen. For every five hydrogens, you have one nitrogen. And for every two oxygens, you have one nitrogen. This means you have an empirical formula with the form C2H5NO2. In our second example, we'll also be calculating an empirical formula, but this time we'll be doing it based on a combustion analysis. In a combustion analysis, you burn an organic sample in oxygen, and you weigh the products that are produced. And this information lets you deduce the empirical formula. So in our case, a 10 gram sample of organic acid that contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen was burned, and then we collected 17.84 grams of CO2 and 7.3 grams of water. And for any combustion reaction, you have a material that's burned in oxygen. So in our case, we know that that sample only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We don't know what the subscripts are. We're looking for those. So we'll just call them X, Y, and Z for now. We burn that in oxygen, and anytime you have something with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and you burn it, you oxidize that material. So you end up producing CO2 and H2O. If your sample had nitrogen or sulfur in it, you would make different nitrogen and sulfur oxides as well.
Right now we don't have a balanced equation because we don't know the formula of our sample, but this is the structure that we'll have to base our procedure on. So we know that the mass of our sample is 10 grams, and we know that our products contain CO2 and H2O, and the carbon in the CO2 could only have come from our unknown organic acid, which means if we can find the mass of carbon, we know that it must have all come from the organic acid. The same is true for the hydrogen. If we can find the mass of hydrogen in water, we know that all of that hydrogen had to come out of our 10 gram sample initially. The oxygen is a little bit different. The oxygen shows up in CO2 and H2O, and it could have come from either our sample or the oxygen that we burned our sample in. But what we can do to find the amount of oxygen is we can say our 10 gram sample had to have the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen inside it. And if you take away those masses from the 10 grams, you're left with the mass of oxygen. So what we can do now is we can work out from our masses of CO2 and H2O the masses of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, and then the moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we can compare those moles exactly the way we did in the previous example. So we can start with our CO2. We have 17.84 grams of CO2, and we can convert that to moles. One mole of CO2 weighs 44.01 grams, which means we have 0 0.4054 moles of CO2. We don't really care about CO2, we care about carbon. So we have 0 0.4054 moles of CO2, and we know that for every one carbon atom, we have one CO2 molecule. So we can say that the CO2s are going to cancel here, one mole of carbon for every one mole of CO2. So we have 0 0.4054 moles of carbon, and we will need that value at the end. But remember, we can't actually find the amount of oxygen without the masses of carbon and hydrogen, so we need to also find the mass of carbon. So 0 0.4054 moles of carbon. Carbon weighs 12.01 grams per mole. Our moles cancel, and we're left with 4.868 grams of carbon. Once we've found the amount of carbon, moles and grams, we can use the water to find the amount of hydrogen. So what we do is we start with 7.30 grams of water, and we say one mole of water weighs 18.02 grams, which means we have 0 0.405 moles of water. And 0 0.405 moles of water can be converted into moles of hydrogen. For every one mole of water, you have two moles of hydrogen. So two hydrogens for every one water, waters cancel, and we're left with 0 0.810 moles of hydrogen. And again, we need the moles for our final calculation. And again, to find the amount of oxygen, we need the masses of carbon and hydrogen, so we need to find the mass of hydrogen. 0 0.810 moles of hydrogen. Hydrogen weighs 1.01 .01 grams per mole. So the moles cancel, and we're left with 0 0.818 grams of hydrogen. Now we have information related to carbon and hydrogen, and we need to find the amount of oxygen. So we said that the mass of oxygen is going to be the mass of your sample minus the mass of carbon plus the mass of hydrogen. So what we have is the mass of oxygen is equal to 10.0 grams minus 4.868 grams plus 0.818 grams. And that works out to be 4.3 grams of oxygen once you take into account significant figures. 4.3 grams of oxygen, and oxygen weighs 16 grams per mole, so one mole weighs 16 grams, and the grams cancel, and we are left with 
0.27 moles of oxygen. And now we have moles of oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen, and we can use those values to calculate our empirical formula. So we have an amount of carbon, we have 0.4054 moles of carbon, we have hydrogen in the amount of 0.810 moles, and we have oxygen in the amount of 0.27 moles. And just like our previous example, what we do now that we have moles of each atom is we compare those moles to one another. And we do this by setting everything relative to the smallest number of moles. And in this case, that's oxygen with 0.27. So we say 0.4054 divided by 0 0.27, 0 0.810 divided by 0 0.27, and 0 0.27 divided by 0 0.27. And that gives us ratios. So now we have carbon has the ratio of 1.5, hydrogen the ratio of 3.0, and oxygen the ratio of 1.0. That means for every one and a half carbons, you have three hydrogens and one oxygen. Uh, so this gives you an empirical formula with a form C1.5, H3.0, and O1.0. This is not a normal format. Typically you don't see formulas with fractional values. So what you have to do in this kind of situation is you multiply uh, by a whole number in order to get values that are whole number subscripts. So if you double everything just to get nice whole number values, you end up with C3, H6, O2, and this is your final empirical formula.